All right, in this video, we'll be going over how to conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test in R. Our data set over here is called sex employ. It's looking at sex assigned at birth of individuals, whether or not they report being a full-time student, whether or not they report having a full-time job, and whether or not they report having a part-time job. Okay, now the chi-square goodness of fit test in R uses a nice simple function chi-square test, but if you just try to put the nominal variable in there you want, so sex employ and then dollar sign sex at birth or like run a chi-square goodness fit test, it will not work. And it will give you an error that looks like this. This function for the goodness of fit test, you have to get the frequencies for your nominal categories ahead of time, and you also have to specify the proportions you want your null hypothesis to test against. So to get the frequencies for all our nominal categories, we will use the table function. Okay. Now here, we can just go ahead and input the variable we want. And to make my life easy, I'm just going to cut this right out of there and paste it right in there. So now we can see that we have 128 individuals with female and 72 individuals with male. So those are the frequencies we want. Now we can save the output from the table function in an argument. I'm going to go ahead and do that to an R object called freak. And we'll create that freak for frequency. Okay. And so now we have that down here. We're also going to want the proportions we're going to test again. Now, if we're checking whether or not they have an equal distribution and there's no reason they should differ, it would be 0.5 and 0.5 as we have two nominal categories. If you wanted to include intersex in here, it would be 0 0.33, 0 0.33, and 0.33. Okay. Um, in our data set, we only have male and female, so that's what we're going with. Okay. So prop for proportion equals C for combine, 0 0.5, comma, 0.5. And we'll create that our object, which you can now see right over here. Now we can come back over to our chi-square test and say, do a chi-square on our frequency data, assuming the different proportions are equal to prop. So now it gives us our chi-square test, where we have our actual chi-squared value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value associated with it. In this case, assuming we have a standard alpha of 0.5, we would have a significant difference. Okay? Now, we would like to be able to visualize this as well, so not just have that data in a table, but actually be able to look at it. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do that. If we wanted to create a pie chart, it's actually a nice, simple function, and we already have our frequency data, where you just take that frequency data we created with the table, and then run that code. And that will give us a nice, simple pie chart. Now, we can make this pie chart a little bit better, okay? And so we can go ahead and do that. So if we wanted to specify the colors, we can do that. So call equals C for combine. And then you can specify the colors by name or with the HTML color code, which is my preferred way of doing it. So FECB00 gets the yellow that's used by the university I work at. And then hashtag two, or excuse me, 002344 gets the blue. Now note that the HTML color codes are in blue and they're preceded by a hashtag. So creating that chart this time, now we have that blue and that yellow. And if I wanted to add a title to the graph, I can go ahead and do that. So um, main equals quote sex assigned at birth. And so I can create a nice chart like that. Now, pie charts are nice. They give you a quick picture of the data, but if you have multiple categories and there's no one that has a clear minority, they're actually kind of hard to interpret, so a lot of people prefer a different visualization. Enter bar charts. Now, for this bar chart, what we can go ahead and do is we'll use ggplot, so I'll call that up from the library. Okay, so we've got our ggplot in there. Okay, we've called that up. Now we need to use the ggplot function, and we'll set that equal to, excuse me, 
parentheses. First thing we need to specify is our data frame in question. Then we need to specify our aesthetics. Now for our x value, what we'll go with is sex at birth. And this has to be an exact match over here down to the caps. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and also apply our fill to be sex at birth. Okay. So I'll go ahead and create that to make sure we actually create the background for the plot, which we now have. Okay. Now we can go ahead and add that next layer. And in this case, we're just going to go geom bar. And so now we have a nice bar chart where it shows how many females we have and how many males we have. Now we'd like to clean this one up a little bit more. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's add an x-axis label. Okay. And we'll have that be sex at birth because we don't want that nasty R jargon in there. We want it nice and clean. So that we have our sex at birth should be in there. Then we'll go ahead and we will change our Y axis label. It's common to use frequency as opposed to count. So we'll add that in there. Now that we got that in there, let's go ahead and let's update the colors and also the legend title over here. Okay, so scale fill manual will let us pick custom colors for our bars. We'll use the values argument for that. So values equals C for combine, and then we specify our colors, FECB00, zero, zero, and then comma, quote, hashtag 002344. So that will get us the colors we want, but we would like to update this legend as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll add a comma in there after that second parentheses hit enter and now name equals quote sex at birth and now we have a nice graph set and ready to display this nominal data you could add a theme after the fact if you want to okay which you might do say if you want to stay theme and then classic so we don't have any grid lines that's what we have right there, a nice presentation or publication ready figure. Another chart that's commonly used is called a waffle chart. Now, what a waffle chart will look like is like a waffle where you have a separate square representing each person. The package that you will need is waffle. Now, I've already installed it, but that's the code you'll need to install it. I just need to call it up from the library now that I've already installed it. So I've got waffle called up from the library and then the code for this is also nice and simple. Waffle Greek. And at the base level it can be just that simple where it will create a nice waffle chart where every single square represents a case or person in your data set and the colors represent what they identify as okay now if you want you can create a custom number of rows so say we know we have 200 people maybe we wanted this to be a little bit more square so maybe we want the number of rows to be equal to say 15 okay now it'll do that and it'll give us 15 rows now now you'll note we now have these blue squares. These blue squares are what just spaces it needs to fill out the row. Okay, We would ideally like that not to be there, and we can get rid of that by specifying a custom number of colors. Okay, So colors equals C for combine, hashtag FECB00, zero zero, comma, quote, zero zero two three four four so when we specify custom colors those extra squares drop out and you can play with this to get however many you want maybe you want it right at 20 okay 
Maybe you're like, no, I would rather like it at 10. You can play with that. Okay? You can add a title to it by adding another argument for title equals quote sex at birth. Okay? Now, if you want to flip it such that right now it's kind of more horizontal versus not, um, horizontal versus vertical, or landscape versus portrait, you can change the number of rows to do that, but that can sometimes change it to where you don't want it because it stretches everything out weird. Flip equals true. And so now this will make it into a portrait orientation as a default. And then you can also change the ordering of the category. So right now we have female is the yellow and male is the blue. You could reverse this by setting reverse equal to true, and they'll be flipped with regards to order. Okay, now I suppose it doesn't change the colors, but it changes which one's at the bottom versus at the top. So that's how you would do a chi-square goodness fit test, and those are three common visualizations for it. Um, good luck and have at it.